So if you've been hearing a lot about React lately from courses to newsletters to emails or blogs, it's literally everywhere. And you always wanted to know what is React and without this kind of like complicated tutorials or explanations, just straight to the point without keeping or keep rolling the same place. Well, in this particular video, we will try to explain what is React in the easiest way possible, the simplest way possible. So this particular video, just gonna jump into the aspects and the fundamentals of how React works and why React is so important and how it basically manages all of that and renders kind of stuff without the complicated parts. So in a brief, React is simply a library or a UI library that basically allows you to render user interfaces efficiently and in a performance way on your browser throughout JavaScript or alongside JavaScript. That's the basic explanation of what React is. There's more complicated stuff that comes into React, but that's the basic part. So you use React, it's a library, and you use it to build really awesome and interactive, animated, uh, cool looking and, and kind of CSS styled components and render them in your website, web application, or even it works on mobile devices. Yes, both Android and iOS. So is React really hot or is it even that hot? So if we take a quick look on the chart from 2020 and 2021, most used libraries slash frameworks, we're gonna notice React taking the lead among all the other libraries or frameworks that basically are being used. So React is taking like 40% and it actually took off jQuery, which was a king in the last couple of years. And now React is actually taking the lead on all of those. This is a really remarkable notice just to tell us that React is really, really promising library. And so many people are just like so interested about it. And you can find literally anything you want to look, tutorials, articles, uh, new kind of libraries, just whatever you want, you're going to find it about React. So the main aspect I would say that made React that even popular and hot, well, basically it has its own virtual DOM, which works really well and very performance friendly when it comes to the traditional regular browser DOM. It also has something like GSX, which is kind of like built in where you include and allow you to render HTML inside of JavaScript files and have all the manipulations that JavaScript basically allows you to do on that particular HTML and everything around it, which makes it so awesome and so nice to manipulate. And lastly, it's component-based architecture. Well, you can put everything inside of components, you can share them with others, you can share them as open source components, and you can literally just reuse it through the code with ease, with no complicated parts at all. So you're probably wondering, what is the virtual DOM? So basically, if you try to compare a virtual DOM to the actual real browser DOM, you're gonna find it, it's pretty basic as a regular DOM, just a clone of a browser DOM. So if you just take those by side by side, you can see easy like a virtual DOM, whatever changes it has, is gonna be automatically gonna be like showing up on the real DOM. So the user is gonna be seeing whatever is actually on the real DOM, but that virtual DOM is gonna be a way to performantly like to update changes and update states into that virtual DOM first and do kind of like a batching algorithm, then all those kind of changes like batch together. And whenever you have a chance, you can apply it directly to the browser DOM. And this makes it so, so efficient and so fast since updating stuff directly into the real DOM makes it so, so performance expensive. That's why React invented the virtual DOM, which made it so performance friendly and so fast. So what the hell is GSX? So from a definition standpoint, GSX stands for JavaScript syntax extension. From this particular extension, we can easily just put HTML markup or HTML code that it can easily allow it to integrate into the actual JavaScript code and become part of it. No, it's not gonna be like something where you put string literals or you put HTML inside of template strings or anything of that, none of that sort. It's none of that. You can do whatever you want with that GSX syntax. You can pass it through functions, return it from functions. You can manipulate it however you want using JavaScript like kind of, you know, 
basic functions and have it all working out together just to render the best possible kind of like React element into the DOM. So for example, if you take a look into this particular GSX code that allows you to basically change your profile picture and it renders your like profile picture and say, oh, you want to change it. It's curious in here, we've got like a regular HTML classes, we got some handlers like on a click and everything, and those functions get integrated with JavaScript really well. So this is what a sample of GSX looks like, but obviously React doesn't understand this kind of syntax. React understands a different kind of syntax that is, you know, built up on like functions and classes and all that kind of stuff. So the actual GSX would be converted to something like React create class with like different props and different objects pass through. And this is what it is. As you see, it's a little bit ugly and, and very hard to understand compared to the GXX and how it looks like, but you don't need to write this syntax. You never will, because this is going to be order generated for you from something like Babel or any other compiler. Obviously React is going to be using something like a compiler that compiles your code down into much more mature and browser friendly kind of code that the browser can understand and do those kind of instructions. Okay, so now what are React components? So as you said before, they are simply just classes or functions that render a particular part of the web page or render like a GSX and it has some other handling, like some other methods that handle this kind of GSX, like handle events, maybe change the colors and maybe like provide some custom CSS classes or you know, the CSS style into this particular components. So this is basically what a component is. And obviously, it, if we take, for example, on a web page in here on a regular web page layout. So if we just take a look, for example, a web page that has a navigation bar, uh, maybe like has another sidebar that has some kind of elements into it as well. And maybe has a content in here where you put, you know, some kind of text contours, maybe images as well. And last but not least, there is a footer inside of that particular page. Now this, what you would imagine is basically those components are composed of all of those kind of like the layouts. For example, you've got a component that is for the nav bar components and other components named sidebar components, uh, maybe another content component or main components that renders those kind of text and images, maybe interacts with the API and all this kind of stuff. And last but not least, you've got this photo component. Obviously, it's not like required to have those separate components for React to work. You can just put everything in a single component and it would still work. For example, you've got like an app components, you create a class named app and you put everything inside of that particular app, like literally everything from the navigation bar to the footer and it still works for you and you can still do it really good. But there's no point into this because React is made and put together using the component architecture to make it easier to read, easier to manipulate and maintain throughout the time. And it's actually much, much simpler to compose this component for your whole team when not only you working on that particular application. And the most important part of React is the React state. The React state is the mechanism that allows you to change and apply changes to the actual browser and like from data when it changes, for example, in your code, this is how you tell it and you apply it to the browser. It's actually the most important components of all React and why React is so much important because it handles this state so efficiently, plus it has this virtual DOM, so it works all great together. So to start with state, you should first notice that for React, there's two types of components. There's the old but still used way, which are class components, and there's the new, really shiny, awesome way functional components that are using hooks. There's just really, really teeny tiny small differences, but we will take, for example, the functional components because they're the easiest type of components to understand on React. So if you go back to our original example where we display a profile picture and we give the user the ability to change this picture by clicking change picture button. So if you imagine this to be a functional component, you can easily see in here, it's just using GSX and it renders that HTML. But now inside of the functional components, we need to actually handle the state and manage state properly in order for the profile picture to be uploaded, for example, to the server and to change the actual profile picture so the user would be able to see it. So to create a state variable in React, you simply use the use state hook, which is imported from the React library. So you just do use state and it actually returns an array. The first one is actually the actual state and this variable will change whenever you call uh, the change of that function and the th second one is basically the method or the function that you call to basically set a new variable or a new 
uh, kind of value for that particular state. So we're going to be doing this for the actual image. For example, it's going to be the image URL or the image base 64 data, whatever in that. So the state is going to be in there. And also you might want to like do another kind of like a function or a handler. So whenever the user clicks on that button, that handler will take care of like loading the, the, the actual image into the state and changing the state in a basic way. So you don't need to go into the complicated part just yet. But just to understand react state is very important. And whenever you actually call the state function, like the set, for example, image in here, it's basically just going to change the actual variable for the state and it's going to re render everything. So react is smart enough to know that when a state actually is triggered, when a state change is triggered, it's basically going to re-render the whole components. And it's not like we're going to re-render the whole web page. No, as I said before, it has some like recancellation uh, kind of algorithms that tells which components have been changed. And it depends on the parents and all the kind of stuff. So the easiest way to know about this is whenever a state is actually changed for that particular components, the component is going to react to the change and it's going to show or render the new change on the actual real DOM. And that's basically it. So if you want to know more about React or learn React in from like beginner to advanced, well, you can go to my channel, you can find like a lot of videos concerning React. So I have tons and tons of videos from getting started with React to React router, rendering stuff to integrating React with APIs and much, much more. So without further ado guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video and catch you all hopefully in the next ones.